The next thing we're going to explore is something called Hatch. Hatch will allow us to fill an area with a pattern. Hatching can help differentiate between one material from another, especially when viewing a drawing in plan view. For example, you have an asphalt road next to a lawn area. The only thing separating the two areas may be a sidewalk or a simple thin line. By hatching, this gives the drawing more clarity. Hatching is often refer preferred over using color, especially in construction documents, because information is not lost if the plan was reproduced using a black and white photocopy machine. So construction documents are often replicated like they'll be 36 by 24 and sometimes are reduced to 11 by 17. And oftentimes out in the field they won't print it in color, it'll just be in black and white. So whatever you draw you want to make sure that it's easily readable in black and white. So the next thing I want to show you is how to hatch. So let's use some of our little example shapes that we've made here and try to hatch these in. So up here at the top in my home tab in the draw I have this hatch button that I said that we would get to later so we're going to get to it now and we can see from the help flyout exactly what it does. It's just going to give an area a pattern. So of course the first requirement in order to do this is you want to make sure that the area is closed. So again I'm going to select this and type list and I can see that it's closed and I want to check my other shapes here and make sure that they're closed and I can see that that one is closed so let's just do these two shapes. So up here I'm going to click this drop down and notice there's different ways that I can hatch and I'm just going to choose the first hatch you're welcome to explore the other hatch and in this drop down thing here there's different things that I can hatch with so let me do this concrete one and now I just need to select the area or just move my mouse over the area and it gives me kind of a preview of what this is going to look like now I will let you know that yours may or may not look correctly but it's okay I'm just gonna go ahead and click here and then hit escape to get out of the command I can select it again sometimes you may have to click and then click again to select it you have to actually select one of these little patterns in order to select it and up here I have several options to change the way that this hatch looks so one of them is gonna be scale and this is one that you'll likely want to change so you can make it bigger or smaller by changing the numerical value inside of this box. You can also change the angle of the hatch. So maybe you don't want vertical lines, you want lines to be in an angle. And you can type in an angle value here and it should change that. Up here you can also give it a transparency if you want it to have a transparency. Or if you just want to completely change the hatch pattern because you don't like it, you can choose a different hatch pattern or just roll your mouse over it and it'll give you a preview of what it's going to look like. And you can see that this one is supposed to be um, kind of diagonal shape, but the reason why it looks like a solid fill likely because the scale is too small, meaning they'll have to enlarge the scale in the properties up here. So I'll have to change the scale if I choose this one so that I can actually see this cross pattern. So once you're done hatching, you want to make sure that you move your hatching to the corresponding layer. So you can actually select the hatch and move it to another layer. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and take a look at our retaining wall up here because I actually do have a hatch pattern for that retaining wall. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And if you notice, I've put the hatch pattern kind of on a, a gray kind of color. That way it kind of pushes it back. So that way it's not overtaking the drawing. The other thing that you want to do once you put things on its own layer is you want to make sure that you set the display order because when you actually go to plot this later and if the hatch pattern's on top it's pretty much going to plot right on top of your regular line work and you won't even see the the boundary line for this stem wall or the edge of this material because the hatch pattern will plot on top of it so to do that to change the display order you just select the hatch pattern and then you right click and you should see display order in here and you can just choose send to back and it'll send that hatch pattern to the back and later you know when we go to set up our sh our sheet our paper space we can get a preview of what this looks like and again we have another opportunity to send things to the back if we missed an item so that's something you always want to remember is to send your hatch patterns to the back and make sure they are a very light gray color